Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Coaching from the Couch, the Washington football team training camp edition. You all, I'm really smiling and I'm really excited because you know what? We are another day closer to football season. Oh my goodness. I mean, am I the only one? Am I the only one that's this excited about training camp and the football season so close to being right here? Listen, I know that everyone is getting checked in. I see Mazdak, the seawall chaplain, has already checked in. Want to make sure as you all are Logging into this live, make sure you are sharing this show with your Washington football team, loving family and friends. This is a special edition of Culture from the Couch that we are doing all throughout training camp. So it's this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. And so we started this last week, um, soon as training camp started. So we've had a few shows now. We've had a few guests now. So we've had Donna Hopkins and Lake Lewis and Rhiannon Walker join us. So listen, every day I'm even more excited about the upcoming season. Um, have you all been ke keeping up? If you haven't, that's why you're here, right? You're here so that you can keep up on what's going on um, with the Washington football team. And if you all can't sense the excitement, I want you to sense the excitement because absolutely wholeheartedly, I really truly believe that there are there's a lot to be excited about. So I want to make sure you all are sharing the show with your Washington football team, family, and friends, because listen, this is just the first week of training camp. So, hey, maybe maybe my, at times, overly optimistic with a slight of skepticism at times self is, is slowly but surely dwindling away, and it's all optimism at this point, but I have to admit, I think there's some promising, really good things that are coming out of training camp. Yes, we know it's just the first week. You know, I'm always going to remind you that this thing is just getting started. But nonetheless, we have to absolutely be happy with all the good things that are coming out so far. So make sure y'all are tagging your folks in. Make sure you're tagging your folks and you're sharing the show with the Washington football team fan groups and your families because we are about to get started. All righty. Let's get it and let's go. A lot of updates, you all, because we haven't come together on the live in like what? Since Saturday morning when Rhiannon joined us. So here's some updates. I know you all are all like probably tired of hearing about COVID, but guess what? We got to talk about it because that's what we got to talk about. And some of these things always affect the team as well. So on Sunday, the team had a on-site vaccination for the team. Ron Rivera shared that he was quite pleased with the turnout. So I think that's promising. I really do think that it is promising. Um, Ron Rivera shared yesterday, he knows that not, you know, all the all team members and he is clear and he is okay in understanding of the fact that not everyone will be vaccinated. They will absolutely start the season with unvaccinated players. So there's that. So listen, let's just be, honest right now. We're not dealing in a situation where the team will be 100% vaccinated by the start of the season. Coach Rivera knows that. The players and the staff know that. But they have been trending upwards in 
vaccinations for certain. And there was a good turnout amongst the team on Sunday. So I think that's good news there. From an injuries perspective, injuries, injuries, injuries. Jamin Davis did have an eye infection, but he was going through individual um, drills and he was there today. Um, Cornelius Lucas is back, um, was back today at practice, but he was working um, on the side field going through individual drills. Um, he has been removed off of the COVID-19 list. He has been removed. Cornelius Lucas has been removed um, from the COVID-19 list. Jonathan Allen, we peep that Jonathan Allen was doing some work on the side. He has a hamstring situation that he is going through. Um, he was going through individuals. He is noted by Coach Rivera as being day to day. So I think that's important. I'm going back to those who have been on the COVID-19 list. Matt Ioannidis. Matt Ioannidis is still on the COVID-19 list, but has been seen at practice working on the side field. I think that's important. On Saturday, in Saturday's practice, Kyle Allen um, tweaked his bad ankle. So the ankle that um, he had to have surgery on and was injured last season, he has tweaked that ankle. Um, so they are keeping a watch on that. He has not practiced the last couple of days. So he's going to be day to day as well. Um, let's see here. Just today, Ron Rivera shared that James Smith Williams has a lower leg injury and is also day to day. And today, tight end Sammy Reyes tweaked his knee. So he tweaked his knee in individual drills and it was visibly um, a concern for him and the staff. So they will keep an eye on that as well. Washington announced that safety DeShazer Everett he was on the non-football illness list. He has passed his physical and he's back. Ron Rivera with some very nice comments on DeShazer. He mentioned, you know, DeShazer, and I quote, isn't just a good safety. He's a heck of a special teams player for us. It was good to have him back. Now, I know there's been a lot of talk about position competitions. I think for certain with the Shazer back, that's even more of a reason to start looking at and saying, hmm, this safety um, position competition is going to get interesting for certain. Absolutely interesting. Absolutely interesting. So a roster update really quick. Um, Washington yesterday, Washington released offensive lineman Ross Reynolds. He just got there, so I'm not sure what that was about. Maybe that was just a filler for time being, not sure. But the roster is now set at 90, just so everybody knows. That's just some overall kind of logistics um, information that I wanted to share. The roster is at 90 with the release of offensive lineman Ross Reynolds. Now, let's get into some of what we've been hearing so far about some of these positions and what's been happening. I absolutely want to mention what has been shared around the defensive backs. Now, I brought this up the other day. I brought this one up the other day. Troy Apke's name keeps coming up. <sighs> Listen, the word is Troy Apke is having a a solid camp. He's having a solid camp, and that's good. We we want all of the players to have a solid camp. But the reason why I'm I'm hesitating, and if anybody is here, and I see Mazdak, I see I see your comment here, and I'm gonna call it out. I'm gonna see your comment here. Why though? That's what I'm saying. It's it's still it's still been mentioned that you know he's having a solid camp consistently, you know, he, he's out there giving it his best shot. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm every time I bring Troy Apke's name up because we have to, right? I have to do it. I'm doing, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to be fair and objective, right? But I got to tell the truth as well. And that is, we all know last year, it was a lot of conversation about Troy Apke. Game day, regular season upon us, 
we we didn't see the Troy Apke that everybody was mentioning during training camp. So all I'm saying is, everybody, a lot of information still coming out. Troy Apke is definitely getting the eyes and attention of media. So let's just see what happens. I'm going to keep bringing it up because they keep bringing it up. So I'm just going to be like, all right, y'all, that's what you say. Okay, cool. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Jermaine Presley, I see you have checked in. What's up, my family? Also want to bring up, again, defensive backs. You've probably heard a lot about the competition between William Jackson and Terry McLaurin. It was, it was such a delight to hear William Jackson in the press conference yesterday talk about how Terry and, and, and William, they're keeping their trash talk on the low a little bit, but they're definitely making each other better. And, and being able to go at each other in one-on-ones and in team drills is absolutely something that they both agree is going to, it's just going to keep them both on point. So I think that's something to continue to watch. You know, Terry is, is already a leader on this team, but to hear William Jackson speak about Terry in the positive light that he did, I think that's absolutely key in the camaraderie, even though they're competing against each other in practice, that's still the camaraderie that you want to hear about and see um, that they're bringing. Another thing that I thought was, again, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this name up. You all have heard me. If you've been checking in, you've been hearing me bring this name up because it's been coming up consistently. Landon Collins across the board everyone is talking about the amazing camp that landon collins is having you all know that he was out with that achilles tear he said he's he's looks to be he's trimmed up um he looks to be faster every day he's making plays every single day he's absolutely making plays i think that's something to know and jermaine i want to highlight your comment here as well because I think it's important. And what you're sharing is it comes down to who's hungry and ready to take that next that next step and making our team the best. Absolutely. Absolutely. And another key thing, and I'm going to bring this up, you all are here it being brought up, at least by me for certain, that I'm hearing it's about the intensity, the energy, the competition. I think that's tremendous because in years past, as we've all known, there's always been some sort of drama surrounding the team, um, drama about just not folks not bringing their best selves. Listen, these team members, they are bringing their best selves to practice. They are absolutely giving it their best shot out there. And I think it's absolutely important for us to note that, that folks understand across the board that their roster spot could be taken. Remember last year when Cameron Curl started making noise, I was hearing a lot of folks say, hey, he can take Landon Collins spot. So listen, Landon Collins heard her. I'm sure he heard everybody too. And he's coming back and he's stamping his, his um, validity and who he is as an athlete and as a leader and what he can contribute to this team. So I will continue to look out and watch the storyline behind Landon Collins so far having an impeccable camp. Another thing I think is important to mention from the defensive back situation, Jimmy Moreland, he's been getting a lot of work with the, or some work, I don't want to say a lot, but some work with the first team at the slot. Also see cornerback Danny Johnson. He's getting some, some reps as well with the ones. Here's something that I thought was really um, important. We talk about, and we're moving a bit to defensive backs and talking about the linebackers and then talking about a player like a Kalik Hudson. So Ron Rivera shared, you know, Kalik Hudson is another player that they're looking at a bit longer in terms of where they want to utilize him because he's so versatile. And so what Ron Rivera mentioned in his presser yesterday is, is, Looking at Khalid Hudson playing a very similar role to that of linebacker Shaq Thompson, where they have five different players rolling in and out of the Buffalo nickel position. So I think that's important to note here because you may see, and they're trying to figure it out. You know, that's that's Ron Rivera's thing, Buffalo nickel. That's that's his thing right there. So he's really looking at Khalid Hudson leading that charge 
and being in that position, which I think is huge and important. Already got a lot of updates, a lot of ton of updates. I do see a question here and I wanna acknowledge this question um, before I move on or we can already jump into what's happening with the wide receivers. I see your question, TJ, in terms of how has AGG looked like, like everyone anticipated him looking. Someone else that has been noted to be having an excellent camp. You know, last year there was a lot to be um, expected from Antonio Gandy Golden, but it didn't translate to the field. We also know that AGG was dealing with some injuries last year that lingered throughout the um, season. So he really just couldn't perform at the high level that was expected of him to, to be. So far, consistently showing up, Absolutely, real clear, fighting for that roster spot. I think it's important to note that that was an excellent question. Excellent question for sure. And something to be excited about. Absolutely. Now, here's another player that I want to bring up. I want to bring up, we're speaking of the offense now, since we switched a little bit over to wide receivers, want to acknowledge rookie offensive lineman Sam Cosme. So I really want to talk about how this kid is holding up. I really want to talk about this. Ron Rivera shared in his presser that Cosme, he's coming along very well. He's practicing against Chase Young and Montez Sweat every play. And the kid is holding his own. Okay. Now, sometimes they might break them down. But it appears that they're breaking them down to build them up. That's what I, that's how I'm I'm translating it. Today was definitely noted that they got in some one-on-ones. And hey, Rhiannon Walker from The Athletic, she mentioned in her reports, Sam Cosme, he really did have two nice reps working against Chase Young. You have to think of it like this. If if Sam and the whole O-line as a whole, right, if they're going up against these players, that high level of, of competition against a Chase Young and a Montez Sweat, if they can hold their own there, then we know they can hold their own on game day. So I think it's, it's extremely important to note that. And I'm going to mention right here, Joy Seawall team member is saying, as I'm talking about this, and I started out the show saying this, hey, listen, excited about football. Can't wait till game day. Listen, hey, y'all know your girl Seawall can be sometimes a skeptic, but I do wholeheartedly believe that this team, a lot to be excited about. I really like what I'm hearing about Sam Cosme, and I think it's a good deal there. Quarterback updates. Quarterback updates. As I mentioned earlier, Kyle Allen is day-to-day. He tweaked his bad ankle. So it has been uh, the three quarterbacks, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick, um, Taylor Heineke, and Steven Montez also in there getting some reps. Um, and I think there, you know, from between Taylor and Ryan, and I had to think to myself, I think we're seeing what you want to see in camp and not in the game, where they have some amazing plays, where you know they're right on target. Then at other times, there's absolutely some picks being thrown as well. But hey, get those jitters off. This this is this is where you work all those kinks out during training camp. Um Nothing really to note there. We all know that it's basically Ryan Fitzpatrick's. He he's you know QB one right now, but we'll see as time goes on in camp if Taylor Heineke can in fact edge him out. So this is still something that we've been saying from the very beginning that we're going to keep continuing to watch as with other um, positions as well. But definitely wanted to mention that they're still moving and shaking and, and, and making progress there. Two more things, two more things, because it was a lot. It was a lot, you guys. So Antonio Gibson, I did want to bring up this Antonio Gibson update because I thought it was it was really compelling um, that this was shared and that Rhiannon actually shared this in her report. And I wanted to bring it up here because this is what I'm about to bring up. This is very just an example of 
the culture shift and the teaching and the learning um, that's happening there. So there was a play and um, Rhiannon shares, you know, Gibson, he catches the, uh, the quick pass out of the backfield. And so instead of going out of bounds, right, he tries to muscle, tries to get into the end zone. Right after that play, Scott Turner lets him know, hey, listen, when you got one time out, when you get that ball, you, you can't get it. You can't get in. You're going to lose clock time like that. Go out of bounds and save the clock. Next play, of course, Antonio Gibson, he ended up getting in, in there for the touchdown. But I, I thought it was important to note that learning moment and what was and what happened there because it's key. Again, this is training camp. This is practice. This is where you want to make those mistakes so that you don't make them on game day. So very important. Kudos, of course, to Sky Turner for noting that and sharing that with Antonio Gibson and for him to make that corrective action. Got to love that. Also, something I think is very important to share, Ron Rivera said that and Antonio Gibson, remember last year, Antonio Gibson was dealing with turf toe, having a really, really hard time in turf with the um, dealing with the turf toe. And it was also reported that even that injury of turf toe lingered into OTAs. But so far in training camp, Antonio Gibson has been looking on point. I see your question here again, TJ. I mentioned actually about Sammy's Reyes. Actually today, just in practice, Sammy's Reyes did tweak his knee. So he was having a solid training camp for certain, but today he tweaked his knee. They got to take a look at it a bit more and, and, and let's see what happens. You know, actually, if you haven't, let me plug a few months ago, I was able to sit down with Sammy's Reyes and had a great interview with him. He's absolutely somebody I am pushing for. Want to, to make the team and to make an impact. I know he absolutely wants to be on the team. And he shared that on, you know, in the interview on the Seawall Sports and Entertainment Facebook page that he is, he's going to br bring all that he has. He assured the Washington football team fans of that. So hopefully it's not that serious of an injury, but he did in fact tweak his knee today. Before I close out, let me just say this. The trash talking is at an all time high out there. Now, listen, I, I mean, even Terry McLaurin is getting involved a little bit. And, you know, hey, taking up for his offense against the defense. The energy is there, everybody. The energy is absolutely there. And as I will continue to share, as long as they are making the corrections in those mistakes during training camp, then we all know that it won't happen on game day. Now, listen, we already know we're not necessarily asking for a perfect season. But what we do want to say is take corrective action. When you make a mistake here, let's do the let's make, you know, let's make corrections. Let's fix our mistakes and let's move forward. I think there's much more to come, much more to come. Training camp, I believe today was just day six. So it's still a lot more training camp left. You know, we go all month long through August. So we'll see what happens. Okay. So listen, this was the, uh, this week, we're only doing today for the training camp update. As you all know, there's no practice tomorrow or Thursday. There is the Friday night football practice at FedEx Field, Friday night. Then they're off on Saturday. They're back at practice on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for sure. So I might be checked back in next Tuesday during lunch, during lunchtime. Of course, after practice is over, after the pressers are over, once I'm able to collect all the, you know, all the updates and see what's going on, because we absolutely want to keep up to date with everything. But in terms of the Seawall Sports and Entertainment Coaching from the Couch, Washington Football Training Camp Edition live, I think we're going to wait until next Tuesday after a few more training camp practices. So we'll have a full update like we did today. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you all are sharing this show with your Washington football team, loving family and friends. Trust me, we don't miss a beat. 
at Sea Wall Sports and Entertainment. So we're gonna make sure you all don't miss a beat either. Okay. So you all enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and I will see you all with another training camp edition um update next week. Wait a minute. Sorry. You'll actually see me on Thursday for coaching from the couch because I we also do the DC weekly. I'm like, how did I forget that? Every single Thursday. So you're gonna see me on Thursday anyway at 7 30 at night. But in terms of training camp updates. That's next week. All right. So we'll see you guys on Thursday.